everyone here uh, to Melissa's. Today I uh, have a, a, a good friend of mine I've known in the industry for several years. Um, and when she came out with her book, I'm saying we have to have her out here. She's actually not here from LA. Uh, she's now transplanted from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and now she's in Indianapolis. Yep. So, um, and this is her book. It's Clean Eating for Busy Families. This is the revised and expanded uh, edition, um, which just came out like in March, right? So, she's going to talk about it today later at the presentation. But I wanted to do a little intro, you know, because, um, you know, we're coming up to the holiday season, and Michelle's not only a, um, a author and food writer, but she's also a TV personality that you'll see in Arizona, on TV, and then also in Indianapolis. So a lot of people are really confused because she keeps on popping up in Arizona because she'll fly out there to do the gigs because that's been her home for 15 years. And then she uh, regularly does uh, the local channels in Indianapolis. So take it away, Michelle. We'll, so be, we'll be taking it away and uh, introducing the menu for you guys today. Yes, well, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you all for making the trip. I uh, know. Uh, it takes a little while sometimes to get around this town, but I love coming to visit. So the menu that we have today, I wanted to have a nice, well, first of all, they're all favorites from my cookbook, but I also wanted to have some, depending on dietary preferences, some gluten-free, some vegan, some vegetarian, some really meaty protein pack things as well. So there's a nice little smattering, but uh, so the book, this is the revised and expanded copy. So these are, uh, some of these are the newer recipes. There's over 120 recipes in the book. So this first one here, this, I just want to jump right into this. This is a seven layer hummus dip. It has pesto and cucumbers. We're using the, the hummus is made with the Melissa Burgess chickpeas. So easy. These are just cryobacked, ready to go. And the seedless lemons. So there's cucumbers and feta and all sorts of delicious things. Cucumbers from Melissa's. We have the, this is a lentil salad. This is vegan, so satisfying. The creaminess comes from the avocado. And these are made with the Melissa's Produce lentils, which I love those because again, they're just so easy. You just crack open that bag and they're ready to go into your salads. There's also, it's not too spicy. It's just like a tiny little accent of uh, spice in there. Balanced out with a little lime vinaigrette. Uh, then here we have my zoodles, zucchini noodles. And I'm going to actually show you how to make these today. How many of you have made zoodles before? A few of you, half of you have? Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, they, the this lift off the top. Oh, go ahead. Okay, can they see that? All right, there we go. You can see that a little. The zoodles actually, I use, I added um, mint and red wine vinegar to these. I got these, that idea. I was in uh, Sorrento, Italy a few years ago, and that she she added those that's a combination i wouldn't normally think to use is mint and red wine vinegar and it was just amazing and so simple and there's some olive oil and garlic in there as well and then also my cauliflower mac and cheese so of course mac and cheese i mean that's my 10 year old's favorite food on the planet so i found a way to incorporate cauliflower into the cheese sauce so there's uh, some milk in there there's uh, Cauliflower, that's the bulk of the sauce, but it just tastes yummy and delicious. So that's in there. Oh, and the Melissa's in there is the fresh turmeric root, which you can just grate it like ginger. You peel it, you could peel it with a spoon, and then just grate it right in there. And then right here we have, I'm going to demo this. This is my chicken parmesan. You really have to see, well, you'll see it soon. But this is a one pan recipe. I created this recipe when I was a private chef, and they loved, they hired me because I was an RD and a chef, and they loved chicken parmesan. So this is, of course, a lighter version. Instead of a heavy breading, it's just like a nice little dusting. And actually, the one that we prepared today, is this with almond flour? Do we use almond flour? I think so. You can use whole wheat flour, rice flour, almond flour, so that it's gluten-free as well, and grain-free. There's so many different dietary preferences. I, I say, that's cool. Whatever you're following, I will find a way to cook for you. So I like to I like to give the people what they want. And then I have some spinach on top and a little two ingredient tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese. And then over here we have who doesn't love a sloppy Joe? Uh, 
So the, what's unique about this recipe is instead of, so this is a one pan recipe as well, ready in 30 minutes. And that's a lot of my recipes in the book. I think everybody wants 30 minutes. I'm a chef, I want 30 minute recipes. Like I don't wanna be in the kitchen nice all day. So this recipe here, instead of uh, you know a, a, a mix of sloppy joe, this is just totally from scratch. The sweetness comes naturally from dates. So there's no added sugar in this recipe. Dates give you that fiber, potassium, and they're just delicious. So they're minced very fine. You wouldn't even know they're in there. They just kind of blend in with the meat. And then uh, there's some smoked paprika, some tomato paste, some broth, uh, and then of course, a pickle I think is the perfect topping for a sloppy joe. So that's what we have there. And in those we have uh, Melissa's onion and green pepper, bell pepper, and garlic. And then these, actually Melissa's, uh, Robert, somebody picked this from the, uh, from the Melissa's team. I love, I was always thinking like produce, produce, but they, these are a crowd pleaser. Um, so it's like half cookie, half candy. So the, the bottom is like a graham cracker crust, and then the peanuts are caramelized, so they're crunchy from, there is real sugar. Desserts are one thing that I just say, put the real sugar in there and enjoy the dessert. Um, so that's what we have here. So they're crunchy, and then there's a dark chocolate drizzle on top. So very simple. Simple and streamlined. I love it. Great. Thank yeah. you, Michelle. So Michelle. Hey, everyone. Welcome here to Melissa's Kitchen. Today our guest is my good friend for several years in the food industry, uh, Michelle Dudash. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about her. I hold uh, her book, um, Clean Eating for Busy Families. It's a revised and expanded copy that just came out this year. It's a copy that you guys should all have. Now Michelle is an award-winning dietary nutritionalist, uh, a Cordon Bleu certified chef, and an author of a top-selling cookbook. Uh, through her company, Chef Dudash Nutrition, Michelle is a food and nutrition writer, recipe developer, TV personality, and national nutrition and culinary spokesperson, as, as well as her own, uh, and her web, sh she's also a web uh, show host, excuse me. She's a regular contributor um, to the popular eight-year running Dish with Dudash, uh, recipe column in the Arizona Republic, the Food Network's Healthy Eats uh, Men's Journal. Additionally, she has written for Today's Dietitian, Eating Well, Diabetic Living, Shape, Self, Parents. I can go on and on. She's been appeared upon The Rachel Ray Show, The Doctors, The Chew, The List, Cheddar Business, ABC, LA. There's not yeah. a publication she hasn't <laughs> worked with or for or contributed to. So proud to have her as my friend and finally here in Los Angeles uh, to join us in the Melissa's Kitchen. And finally, she now resides, even though many think that she still lives in Arizona because she does the TV shows there. Uh, she uh, lives with her family, her husband and two daughters in Carmel, Indiana. Yes. So my guest today here, talking about her exciting book, Michelle Dudash. <laughs> So that's where it all started. 
Um, but I didn't really know what exactly I wanted to do. I knew I was, oh, I was good in math, so the librarian told me to be, become um, an actuarian. I didn't actually know what that meant, but I did claim that as a degree at University of Wisconsin-Madison where I went to school. But when I was signed to pick classes for college for freshman year, my grandma said, well, why don't you take a nutrition class because that's all you ever talk about. So I took a basic nutrition class and from there, it was love at first sight. I changed my major, thankfully for me, first semester in college. And then I started, uh, I was working in the restaurant business since the age of 14. So I worked in restaurants all through college. And after I graduated, I went into food service for a compass group, Chartwells, moved to Arizona. And from there, I fell in love with the culinary side. I was tasting, that was the first time I was exposed to like a Bordelais sauce. And I was like, wow, how do they make the sauce? So I was reading gourmet magazines. I was reading cookbooks as like they were novels. And before I knew it, I was driving to Scottsdale to go to culinary school. And I was signed up all of a sudden. And magically, I was, I was enrolled in culinary school. And that's how I ended up in Scottsdale. So from there, I cooked in fine dining at Mary Lane's. I was a private chef for a wealthy family in uh, Paradise Valley, Arizona. And actually, a lot of the, this book, the inspiration, I wrote every single recipe in this book. Um, I, and in the head notes and the intros, you'll, I have little stories like where, where they all came from. So the chicken parmesan that you enjoyed today, that was when I was a private chef. She wanted light food. Uh, I cooked for Prince Andrew on their porch once. Um, I, you know, it was an interesting life. We'd go to Cabo. Um, cooked for food, food for the private jet. It was like a really amazing experience. And then I became a perfect personal chef. I wanted to start my own business. So that's where it kind of all stemmed from. My first TV segment, I was terrified. My knees were bouncing up and down. My lips were quivering. And they thought I was the food stylist, not the talent. <laughs> because I think I rolled in in kitchen clogs and a black t-shirt. We don't wear black in television. You wear bright colors, but I had no idea. I think my hair was pulled back. I definitely did not have enough makeup on for television, but I realized I loved it. So I combined all of those things, and that's where uh, I kind of just ended up here today. So where I, where, what I do in my business, which is writing for the media, writing for food companies, writing recipes. I love so what is clean eating? That is uh, a question, of course, I get all the time. Uh, clean eating, at its most basic foundation, is choosing foods in their least processed state. So closer to their more natural state, all right? Now, you can go deep and really deep into clean eating, right? But that is really the basic foundation. So most foods are processed in some shape or form, right? Unless you went pluck that apple right off the tree, it, the food is processed in some way. Produce is washed. Uh, maybe it's peeled. Maybe it's so. So I don't see process as a negative thing. I see it as it's a continuum. All food falls on falls on a continuum. Uh, but what, as a dietitian, uh, what I'm looking at is what was done to the food, right? So basically, I'm looking at was anything taken out of the food? Was anything removed? Was anything added? So to me. Uh, clean eating is, you know, it doesn't have a lot of added sugar or has zero added sugar. Foods that are less processed tend to contain no or less added sugar. Um, they don't contain added salt. I love salt, don't get me wrong. We need salt, we need sodium as human beings. Uh, but some Americans do to, you know, a lot of highly processed food, restaurant foods are eating too much sodium. Uh, so anyway, the processed food less sodium, and also the fats. What kind of fat was added to the food if it's in a package? Fat is good. Extra virgin olive oil, expeller pressed oils, rather than the highly refined oils. So when it's pressed, or extra virgin olive oil, if you go to Italy, they say, olive oil isn't actually pressed. It's put in a centrifuge, and they extract, you know, extract the oil that way. But um, there's going to be more nutrition. When you see the olive oil that has that beautiful green hue in it, those are polyphenols. Those are antioxidants. That, those, are the, those are part of the health, heart healthy benefits in that food. Uh, and then, of course, there's things like fiber. Whole grains. If it's highly processed, they take off the fiber. So those are things that I look at when I'm considering is a food you know, clean. Now, what, is, what, is, uh, what, what clean eating is not, I don't see clean eating 
I don't see it as a detox diet. I don't see it as a weight loss diet. Now, of course, you could lose, you certainly could lose weight. I think everyone, you know, it just depends on where your starting point is. But clean eating is more just about the quality of the food. So there's all these benefits to getting these meals on the table. So in my book, I focus on 30 minute meals as often as possible. There's some 20 minute meals. I focus on slow cooker meals. Uh, people love, I find people love slow cooker meals. You just throw those meals in there and they're ready. Some of them are actually interchangeable where you can do either one. Uh, sheet pan dinners, I try to focus on ingredients that you can find at one grocery store rather than running, I, that's a complaint I've heard from moms, oh my gosh, I had to run to three grocery stores just to get the ingredients for that recipe. So I love shopping at, of course, the gourmet markets, but I really strive to shop especially when I'm developing a recipe, is at the stores that most families are shopping at. So I know I can find that ingredient, and I don't have to go to three stores to buy the ingredients. Mm -hmm.